live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Grace Hopper's Celebration of Women in Computing. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Grace Hopper Conference. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We are joined by Rory Budnick. She is the Engineering Manager at Procore. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So tell our viewers a little bit more about Procore. Sure, so we make cloud-based construction project management software. So what that means is everything in your construction project can be stored in Procore. Uh, everything from the budget for the project to the drawings that your subcontractors need to see on the job site. And so these are two it's, it's mixing construction and engineering, two very male-dominated fields, uh, all in one. Yeah. <laughs> so talk a little bit about what your experience at Procore has been uh, so far in your career. Sure, uh, so I joined Procore when there were 150 people, which was a little over three years ago. And now there are over a thousand, we're in international markets, it's a whole different ballgame. Um, it's been an awesome experience, I feel like I've gotten to grow with the company. Uh, I started out as an individual contributor, and now I'm a manager. Uh, I've been involved in a lot of hiring at Procore, and so uh, we talk about two things here at Grace Hopper in terms of getting more women in tech, uh, more female software engineers. One, I would say, is the pipeline, um, and two, being retention. So in terms of the pipeline, those, being in hiring is important, right? Uh, being here, having a Procore booth, um, making sure that we are having our recruiters talk to female software engineers in the first place. And in terms of retention, Procore has been just a really supportive place to work. I mean, me being here is a testament to that, but things like unlimited time off. Um, unlimited time <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of the many perks. I mean, it, it's just a comfortable office space. Um, where we're making diversity, diversity a priority um, and realizing that our employees need to be happy to get the best work done. It's definitely the most supportive company I've ever worked at in that respect. Now research shows that, that women, in, in women engineers really go into this field because they like to solve real world problems. So can you talk a little bit about the kind of technology challenges that, that engineers face at Procore? Sure, um, that's one of the things I love about Procore is that we work on really tangible problems. So, and you, you see the payoff, you hear it directly from the customers. Um, so like, I work on the drawings team. Drawings is one of our flagship tools. Uh, people upload all their drawings for a project and we make sure that people are always working off the current set, which is really important uh, so that you don't have to do any rework um, and you stay on budget and on time. So, and these are the headaches of, of any major home project too, is the, <laughs> the, the fact that the timeline always slips and the budget always balloons. So. Yes, whether it's a home project or it's LaGuardia Airport, which is one of the projects that's in Procore, it, it's the same problems. Um, so we get to work on things like making sure that clients are working off of that current set. What's the best way to do that? Um, we hear there are real world problems like different ways to keep track of drawing revisions, um, and we make sure that we adjust for whatever their method is of doing that. Um, the biggest thing that we're working on right now technically is scaling, um, which is an exciting problem. Um, we're working a lot on performance. We have about two million users, so it's sort of like the best problem to have, where we, we have such high demand that now we need to meet it. Um, so. A lot of the real world problems that we're solving, we, we have pretty solid solutions in place, we just need to scale to meet that demand. And as you said, the company is growing mm -hmm. so much. So how are you making sure that it stays and remains that comfortable place to work as it gets bigger? That has been very interesting to watch. Um, it's just been a great professional development experience uh, for me as a growing manager. And um, I think that the key thing we're doing is in hiring, we look for three qualities, um, and they are ownership, optimism, and openness. They all start with O, so it's easy to remember. Okay. Um, but we really do look for those qualities in people and find people that you know, demonstrate that ownership, want to run with a project, feel like they're showing, uh, that they put their self-worth uh, in the project, and so they're really willing to go the extra mile. Um, in terms of optimism, uh, doing well with change, I mean, growing that quickly, we're looking for people who work well with change, are excited about our Are adaptable. Growth. Exactly. Um, 
and then uh, openness. Openness. <laughs> yeah, I almost forgot the last one. Uh, openness. For me, where I see that the most at Procore is just communication from the executives. Um, that no matter who you are, you could go up to one of them and start a conversation, and they make a point of doing you know all hands meetings where they're communicating what the top company priorities are, um, what our investors are saying, things that you wouldn't think that an individual contributor would even be aware of. They're, they lay it all out there. So, I mean, it, it sounds great, the idea that, that the lowest person on the totem pole can go up to a senior manager and give her input on a new idea or, or pitch, pitch something. How does it really work, though? I mean, how do you empower that, that junior employee? I mean, I think a lot of that's individual management. Right, um, but then an example I can think of in terms of empowering individuals' ideas at Procore is we just started a diversity and inclusion council um, as part of our efforts to kind of begin tackling the problem of um, increasing more the number of women in tech. So that means that 20 employees are meeting, they're funded by the company, um, and they get to figure out their takeaways, figure out their initiatives, and th that's fully supported by the executives. Great, great, great. So here you are at Grace, Ho Grace Hopper. This is your second Grace Hopper. Mm -hmm. What is your, what's your takeaway from this conference? What's, how would you describe the energy? It's incredibly inspiring. Um, it's kind of, it's like being in a bubble for a few days that I, you know, you, it makes me want to extend that out into the real world. Um, Melinda Gates yesterday was amazing. Um, Debbie Sterling this morning. Who's the founder of Goldie Blocks. Yeah, yeah. it's just, it just reminds me of that saying, you can't be what you can't see. And this is the opportunity for people to see. Um, Procore sent about 30 women and this is showing them, here are these women in leadership, here are women who have had really long careers in tech, um, so it's possible for you too. And, in, and, and you know, you're, you're not one of the new entrants to this field, you're, you're, you're already having a successful career, but you're also not a veteran. I mean, what keeps you going? Is even in spite of the Google manifesto and the headlines that we read about the bleak numbers of women in leadership roles? I mean, I, I would be lying if I said those things didn't hurt. Um, and it's, it's really a mind game uh, where you have to sort of self-manage and believe in yourself despite what other people are saying, um, not give people's opinions power over what your abilities actually are. And what's your advice to, to the young women here at Grace Hopper, who maybe it's their first time being here? Mm -hmm. I mean, I my advice for actually attending the conference would be just make the most of it. Um, and how does one make the most of it? <laughs> I mean, it, it is big, it's overwhelming, 18,000 people. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I think, uh, for me, I'm a big note taker. I write down those big takeaways and I revisit them. Um, so, you know, in six months when another one of these, uh, you know, articles comes out with negative news about women in tech, I can revisit that and kind of feel bolstered by that. Are you hopeful that things are changing? Yes. I am and hopeful. you're on the ground, ground floor here. I mean, you really, you're one of the women fighting the good fight every day. And that, that's, that's nice to hear, and uh, I think, you know, last year's Grace Hopper, there were 13,000 people. This year, there's 18,000. Things are trending in the right direction. Uh, for me, I think uh, that pipeline problem is something I think about a lot, and uh, getting young girls interested in technology. For me, uh, I didn't start coding until I was done with college, so uh, it's important to me that people are aware of the possibilities at a young age. Great, great. Well, Rory, thanks so much for joining us. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. Yeah, great talking to you too. Thank you. We will have more from the Grace Hopper Conference just after this.